Amen. Isn't it wonderful as we read through the Bible, and I have uh, enjoyed reading through the Bible and, and taking our Bible reading challenge and, and then preaching along as we read through the Bible. And we're on 2 Timothy uh, today as we read through here. But I want to just check on our scripture reading and reading challenge. Uh, we have uh, our cards turned in, but if you did not get a chance to uh, turn in a card, if you, you did the Bible reading challenge, uh, you read your Bible this week, and, and uh, we want to count you, even though you didn't get a chance to uh, write your name on the card. Is there anyone in this section over here? There's one, two, three. Anyone over here? Anyone over here? In the last section. There's one there, two there. All right. 94 is what we had today. That's wonderful. It's consistent that we have been uh, reading through the Bible, and you've, we've got a core group that have, have stuck through it throughout this. We've got September, October, November, December, four more months. And, and we want to uh, continue staying steadfast with reading the Bible. I want to, con to challenge those. Uh, we had some who just for one thing or another, summertime or vacation or just out of the routine of it, have, have not been doing it. And I want you to pick back up, uh, make these last four months. So I can do it for four months. I, I can read the Bible. I, I can continue on. I, I it can be steadfast. And just whether you just pick uh, the book of Mark and start reading through the New Testament, or if you want to pick up on our, our Bible reading challenge with September, read the Bible. I encourage you so much. We're going to be reading through and preaching through. We'll be preaching through the Psalms on Sunday nights preaching through the New Testament on Sunday mornings. We're on 2 Timothy chapter 2. And so I, I put the first slide that says, Hello, I'm a Christian. Have you ever seen a Christian? Well, what do you mean? Well, what is a Christian? What does it mean to be a Christian? And 2 Timothy talks a lot about what it means to be a Christian, just the different words that, that Paul uses describes the Christian life. He, he, he talks about... And I hope that we come to see that a Christian is more than just someone being good. There's certain characteristics uh, of a Christian. And the first one that he lists here, he said, there, Now therefore, my son, son, he uses. Son. I don't have a son, so I had to use Carrie's. Yeah. <laughs> Carrie's on vacation this week, and he doesn't know this. He, he, he didn't bribe me or anything to put that picture up there. Son, isn't that something special? A father, son. There's something special about Paul and Timothy. He said, my son in the faith, as he would call him. My son. There's something different than just saying about my uh, co-worker, my acquaintance. Son. And those of you who have children and especially father and son and that, that special bond that you have. Whenever you talk about a Christian, we talk about family. My son in the faith. Brothers and sisters together as we talk about family. What, what it means to be a Christian is you are part of a family. You are one among a number that's just not that that these are just strangers that come in together to worship God and, and we leave as strangers, is that we come in as family together. That's special. That's a Christian. I belong to a family. I am a child of God. Galatians chapter 3, 26 and 27. For you're all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. We're children, sons, daughters. Here he uses the word son, something special. You're not just a friend of mine, we're family. So he uses the word son, my son, be strong in the grace. Verse 2, as he would say, he doesn't use the word steward, but he uses the, the activities of a steward. He says, and the same things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. And so he said, Paul says, you have seen me and, and what it means to be a Christian. And, and Timothy, I have seen it in you what it means to be a Christian. And I want you to pass that on down to others also. And so for, it goes from Paul 
to Timothy, to others. Came from daddy to me, to others. I don't know who was significant and prominent in you becoming a Christian. But they taught you, and you lived the Christian life, and now you go and tell others about Jesus. We're stewards. We've give, been given the responsibility, the privilege, the blessing of the gospel. There's something special, and I'm going to hand to you something that's precious to me. Do you have something that's precious that someone has handed to you? We have some quilts that Julie's grandmother made, and, and we just don't use those for everyday use. They're just precious. They're set aside. They're heirlooms. They're going to be passed down to another generation. It, it's something precious. And you take it out and you say, my grandmother made this. It passed down to her daughter, to her daughter, to me. And Julie's daughter will fight about who gets that quilt. <laughs> it's special. And we've been given something, the gospel of Jesus Christ, that my Lord and my Savior died so that you can have forgiveness of sins. And we've been made stewards of that gospel. Someone that held him responsibility with our treasure, our time, our talents. God has placed in our hands. You see, some 2,000 years ago, Jesus walked this earth, and, and by his hands he did work. He lay his hands upon a blind man, and the blind man would receive sight. He would take a little food into his hands, and he would feed those who were hungry. A leopard would come to him and he said Jesus had compassion of him and touched him. He didn't have to touch the leopard to heal him, but he did. He may have been the first person that ever touched that leper, but Jesus touched him. And his hands are gone, and now it's our hands, and it's our feet. And it's our mouth to speak, and it's our eyes to see, and he's placed upon us the great blessing of sharing the gospel. Com the things that you have seen, commit thou to faithful men that they may be able to teach others also. Who will you teach? Who are you passing on? The faith that you received from your parents and grandparents and from generations before that, will it continue? Commit thou to faithful men that they may be able to teach others also. So we are stewards as a Christian. Not only are we stewards, but he continues on, says that we're soldiers. He said, endure hardship as a good soldier. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross. Isn't that a word that we would use and we sing about that and, and that as we talk about being soldiers together. And so we have enlisted in the army. The army of Christ. And so when he talks about, well, who is a Christian? You're a soldier. A soldier goes about wearing the clothing, and it will say a property of U.S. Army or a property of U.S. government. And that not only means a clothing, that means that person too. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your bodies. You're not your own. When you enlist in the army and it says, you know, we talk about fighting the battles or something that, that, he, that no man that war entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him hath, or he pleases those who's chosen him as a soldier. Can you imagine the sergeant giving armies to those men enlisted, to, to the soldiers there? And he says, we're going to go and capture this hill. Y'all get a good night's sleep. In the morning we are heading up that hill and we're going to capture that hill and the one guy raises his hand. He said, I'm sorry, uh, Sarge, tomorrow is my anniversary, and I've got to go home to my wife, and I cannot go and, and capture that hill tomorrow. And another one says, Hi, hey, uh, Sarge, uh, listen, I, I, I've got a, a young son playing t-ball tomorrow, and I've got to be at his game. And, I've got, and another one raises his hand and he said, I, can you imagine that? No, you can't. You're not your own. When the Lord says go and fight the battle, you don't raise your hand and say, excuse me, Lord. 
I've got an excuse. I, I, I'm not there to fight these battles. I, I'm not there to, to, to go and pursue those who are enemies toward you. He said, you're a soldier. Ephesians chapter 6, as, as we put on our soldier and preparing for to be a soldier, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, feet shod with the gospel of peace. Take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, and we prepare ourselves and arm ourselves, and we're ready to do warfare, not against the physical person, but spiritual battles. And that devil is ready every day. Are you ready? Are you ready to take up the fight? We're soldiers as a Christian. And he continues on and say, not only soldier, as he would say, but look at the next verse in verse 5, which says, And if a man strive for the masteries, yet is not crowned, except he strive lawfully. He's using the, the phraseology of one who is an athlete. The boy, I love watching the Olympics. And we've got them all recorded. I don't know if we'll watch them again, but sometime maybe when it's snowing outside, we get, get the fire going, we'll turn on the Olympics and watch those again. Oh, I just love it. I, I love it whenever... Those who are supposed to win, win. You recognize Michael Phelps, most decorated athlete that we have? He won more gold than most nations have. And he's supposed to win. And you root for him anyway and say, oh, that's great, and he won. Well, I like the stories of those who, who weren't supposed to win, and that's why you compete. And they win. And they achieve the gold or the bronze. Some of the happiest winners of, of the Olympics were those who got bronze. Hey, I made it. I got a medal. I didn't get the gold or the silver, but I got a bronze, and I'm tickled to death to have it. We're athletes. And he said, we receive a crown if we strive lawfully. You see, there's, it's just not that everyone receives a crown. He said, did, did, you, did you watch and, and some of those running in the lanes? That they, they would show and highlight, look, he, he stepped on the line. He's disqualified. He didn't stay in his lane. And sometimes that happens on a relay team, and the whole team is disqualified. We're athletes competing. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished the course. I've kept the faith. I have finished the course. I am now ready to be offered. We're athletes. Can you imagine an athlete going to compete to, to the Olympics, just deciding, oh, the day before, I think I'll go to the Olympics. Can you imagine me telling Julie, say, hey, I think I'll go to the Olympics. I think I'll compete in a uh, 100-yard dash. And she'll say, what? Yeah, that's what she would do. She'd laugh. <laughs> what? You mean just all of a sudden you decide you go compete in the Olympics? Don't you need training for this? Don't you need to prepare yourself for this? Oh, no, I can do it. I can run 100 yards. That all I could run. About 100 yards. Oh, can you imagine being a Christian and say, I, I don't need to prepare myself in, in anything. I don't need to read the Bible. I don't need to study it. I don't need to go to Bible class. I, I don't need to talk to others about Jesus. I just, I just want to go to heaven. I'll decide the day before. I'll just get ready for heaven then. If you have a day before to get ready. Oh, we're athletes. We're in training every day. There's certain things we need to be doing. Read your Bible, study, prayer, evangelism. We're athletes. He continues on. He said in verse 6, the husbandman, the farmer. The farmer, he says, we're, as a Christian, we are farmers. Are you sowing the seed, farmers? Can you imagine being a farmer 
And being raised in a family of farmers, and finally you get the farm passed on to you after generations after generations of, of having that farm in your family, and you get there and you say, you just, I'm not going to sow any seed this next year. It, it's produced for generations, generations, and generations. I think it would produce if I don't sow a seed. Either. You say, what kind of farmer is that? He's not going to have anything. He's not going to have any harvest. There's going to be no fruit. Because he didn't sow the seed. And here we are in the church. Generations after generations after generations of people sowing the seed. And we reap the benefits. And we decide, I think the church will be good enough if I don't plant any seed. I think the church would keep on going on. But I'm not going to plant any seed. The seed is the word of God. Luke 8 verse 11. Are you sowing the seed? the seed of the kingdom. Jesus is my Lord. Is he your Lord? Have you talked to anyone about Jesus? Have you talked to anyone of what he can do for their lives? Are you sowing the seed? If not, why not? We're farmers. Sow the seed. Paul would say, I, one would plant, one would water, Paul and Apollos. God gives the increase. But it takes the planting, and it takes the watering, and it takes the work, planting a garden. You plant a garden, and that's, you plant the seed. Is, is that the end of it? I, I think I'll just go out, and I'll have corn. I'll just plant the seed. And then I'll wait for the harvest. Or is that it? You no, know, you have to water it. You have to get the weeds out. You don't want the weeds to interfere with what you have planted. There's work to be done in, in growing a, a garden. And we're farmers. Not only are we farmers, continue on, he says, look at verse 15. He said, a workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth into our hands. He's given us this great treasure. God decided, I'll write down my will. I'll write down my word. And I'll have it where they can read it and study it. Memorize it. I'm not going to call down from heaven and from a great cloud, uh, uh, say at 10 o'clock every morning, I'll just speak from heaven what I want people to do, and everybody all over the world will hear it. God could have done that. No, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm not going to have whenever people go to sleep at night, I'm, I'm going to send them dreams like he did with Joseph and, and, and tell them about my will in their dreams. And then they can wake up the next morning and they say, you know, God spoke to me last night in a dream and, and this is what he said and I, I'll tell you about that. And that's not what he decided to do. He decided, I'm going to write it down. Study to show yourself approved under God. A workman. It's the word he uses. It's just not casual reading. It's not a book that you would have and, and say that you read for pleasure, although it, there is pleasure reading and reading through the Bible. And, and there, there are times and stories and such that we read and we pass on to generation to generation. But he says, study the Bible. These are the words of life. These are the words that lead to heaven. Read it. Treasure it. Study it prayerfully, frequently, fervent. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed. And then he goes on to say in verse 20 and 21, There is a great house, and there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of the earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 says, We have this treasure, an earthen vessel. We are clay pots, as we would say. It's a container. It's a useful container. 
They would put water in it. They would put oil in it as such. It was used to store certain grain or, or such like that. It was a vessel. He said, we are vessels of honor. There are vessels of dishonor, but we are vessels of honor. What do you carry about for the Lord? You are a vessel. You are a container. What's inside you? Is it something useful, helpful for the kingdom? Are we empty inside? Or are we filled? My cup runneth over, David would say. We are vessels as a Christian. And not only vessels, but we are servants. Look at verse 24 and 25. And a servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patience and meekness, instructing those that oppose himself. If God peradventure will give them repentance to the knowledge of the truth. We sang the song, Make me a servant. Lord, make me like you. You are a servant. Make me one too. This song is, Give me the heart of a servant, faithful, loving, and true. Fill me with love, then use me, O Lord so that the world can see you. A servant. Who's the greatest in the kingdom of God? You know, the disciples, two of the brothers were saying, Lord, in fact, had Mama ask, can one sit on the right hand? Can one sit on the left? Can you give them a place of honor? And Jesus is saying, if any would be great, let him be a servant. We have the greatest example of one who is a servant. He came not to be set upon a throne, to have the whole world come and acknowledge him as king of kings in his might, but he came in a manger and said, I am a servant. I will do anything for you. I will die for you. Make me a servant. So what is a Christian? Second Timothy. How do you become a Christian? We have steps that we must hear the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must believe it. We must repent of our sins. That means having a change of heart, to stop doing the things that we once did. Romans 6, verse 1 says, Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Oh, God forbid. No, not at all. And then we make that good confession in Matthew chapter 10, verse 32, where he said, If you confess me before me, and I'll confess your name before my Father which is in heaven. And then we get to go down into the watery grave of baptism. Acts 2, verse 38 says that repent and be baptized for remission of sins that your sins would be, would be washed away. Acts 22 and verse 16, Ananias went to Saul and said, And now why tarryest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling upon the name of the Lord. To have your sins washed away. To be added to the church. Acts 2 verse 47. The Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. And then to live faithful. You see, becoming a Christian is the start. Becoming faithful, to become a son, to become a soldier, to become an athlete, to become a steward, to become a farmer, to become a vessel, to become a servant. What's a Christian? Hope this is, encourages us to say, there's something I need to be doing. I need to be working more on sowing the seed. I need to be more, working more on being that vessel of honor. I need to be working more on becoming a soldier of the cross. If we can help you and encourage, that's what we're here for. Are you a Christian? Do you let your light shine? 
If there's any way that we can help you and encourage you, won't you come right now while we stand and while we sing?